In this video, we're going to look at array list versus linked list, and we're going to do that in terms of insertion. And the first data structure that I want to look at is an array list. If I had an array list that had four items in it, eight, six, seven, and five, and I've also indicated their indexes below each value, I want to see what happens if I insert an item to the end of the array list. And if I do that, it's going to have a big O of constant time because the computer knows where the end of an array list is. And no matter what the size or what list I'm going to put it in at the end, it is going to take the same amount of time, therefore giving it a big O of one or constant time. If I have down here list.add3, it's going to add it to the end of the list, no problem, and have a big O of one. Now, inserting it at the beginning of the list is a little bit different, and we're going to have to manipulate the data. And one way that we can manipulate the data is move the data over one and then insert an item to the front of the list. So that's exactly what we've done. We've shifted every item over one, and now we're going to insert the item. Now, depending on the size of the list is going to depend on how many items we're going to have to shift. Therefore, that operation is going to have a big O of N. Actually, inserting the item would be constant, but shifting the items over one is going to have a big O of N. Next, what if we want to insert anywhere inside of the list? That's going to be very similar to inserting in the front of the list. So if I have two four here, meaning at the second index, I want to put the integer four. So what I'm going to do is shift over the two values and then place the four into the array list. And this also would have a big O of N. Not necessarily because I'm using the entire size of the list, but as an average case, it would be close to the size of the list doing this function or operation. So we see inserting an item at the end of the list is going to have a big O of one or constant time, but inserting it at the beginning of the list or anywhere in the list for that matter is going to have a big O of N because we're going to have to somehow manipulate the data in order to accommodate for our new data that we're going to enter into the list. An array list has two sizes. It has a size and a capacity. The size simply means how many items are inside of the list. And so you can see in this example here, there are four items, eight, six, seven, and five. But then the capacity indicates how many items could be placed inside of the list because an array list does not have an infinite size of memory. By default, this capacity is going to be 10. If we want to insert an item at the end, like we showed in the last slide, list.add3, it's going to have a big O of 1 or constant time. Now, there will be a problem, and I'm going to truncate the list just a little bit to show what that problem would be if we're going to insert at the end and we reached capacity. So the size is no longer 4 and the capacity is no longer 10. The size is 2 and the capacity is 2. What if we made a call on this array list? We wouldn't see this happen, but the list is going to somehow have to allocate more memory for itself. And one way that it could do that is create a temporary array list. And in this particular case, I'm saying that it would double the size of the original array list. So the second array list here is twice the size as this, thereby giving us more capacity. We would then take the items from the original list and move them into the temporary list. And then we would get rid of the original list, or rather point it to the temporary list. So now list is pointing at temporary, and so it would mirror the temporary list. And all of this would work to increase the capacity. So our capacity is no longer 2, our capacity is 4. We would then increase the size from 2 to 3, and inserting an item at the end of the list would only have a big O of 1 or constant time. But the fact that we had to take each item and put it into a new array list, this would take a big O of N. And therefore, when our capacity has run out, that would be the worst case scenario. And rather than having a big O of constant time, we would have a big O of N. There is a way to reduce this problem, and that is if you know how large your list is going to be, you can initialize the capacity. And so in this array list here, we have not initialized the capacity, and therefore it would start at 10. 
And then as it increased in size, we would occasionally run into that big O of N. But if we knew exactly or roughly how many people were going to be in the list, let's say 4,000, we could initialize it that way and not run into that big O of N. Now that we've looked at array list, let's look at linked list and inserting at the beginning, the end, and anywhere inside of the linked list. Inserting an item at the front of a linked list is a big O of one or constant time. And this is because an array list is not a contiguous block of memory. All we're doing is changing the pointers and we're not shifting the data. So the memory references or pointers would be shifted and where the head node is referencing would also be changed to the new node. And that would all take the same amount of time no matter what the list is, but we wouldn't have to move the data and therefore we would have a big O of one or constant time instead of N. It is exactly the same if we wanted to insert an item at the end of the list. There's no shifting that's going to occur. We don't have to come up with more capacity and therefore it would take a constant time of one. So whatever time it took to change the pointers and move the tail, that would be constant no matter what the list is. Now, what if we wanted to insert anywhere inside of the list? Let's say that that node that I just took out, I wanna insert a node back there. Well, the insertion process would be constant time, but because I have to first search for the spot that I want to put the item, that is going to be, on average, a big O of N. The differences in array list and linked list in terms of insertion really boil down to that an array list is a contiguous block of memory. It has to shift around the data. Whereas inside of a linked list, the items are not sitting next to one another and do not have to be moved. All that has to be changed are the pointers. So we see if we look at the last row of the table here that inserting anywhere is going to take a big O of N for each of them. But where the linked list really shines is what if I want to insert at the beginning or the end? If I want to insert at the beginning, an array list has a big O of N, whereas a linked list has a big O of constant time. For insert last, most of the time it's going to be a big O of one or constant time for an array list, but there is that worst case scenario where I run out of capacity and I have to add more before I can add the item. And a linked list does not have to worry about that. So on the whole, if you're going to have a data structure that inserts an item at the first or the last of the data structure, a linked list is probably going to be your best bet.